Hello boys and girls, this is Professor Nelson from Electronic Speaking. Today we are going to see what we can do with the electronic boards of fluorescent light bulbs. These ones here, which are normally found discarded. On this occasion, we are specifically going to see what we can do with this coil here. Which has a toroidal core. So, we are going to remove the coil and see what we can do with it. So, let's start. Okay, here I have the coil. In this case, we have three coils in the same core. Of the three coils, only two of them are going to be used. We will use the blue coil that has more coils. And any of the other two, since they have the same number of coils, we can remove one of them either the yellow one or the green one. It doesn't matter. We take it out and we will see what we can do. Ready? We remove the yellow one. You could remove the green one if necessary. But we definitely need two coils. Let's say the blue one, which has more turns, or the green one, or the yellow one, which has fewer turns. Well, then we have them distributed like this. We have four terminals. Now we are going to build the following circuit. Okay, guys, before we put together the circuit, we're going to use three types of transistors. We have a 2N5551 transistor that handles half an amp. We have another transistor, the BC547, that handles only 0.1 amps. And then we have another one which would be the 2SD965 that handles 5 amps. All three are NPN type BJT transistors. Now the distribution of the pins is not the same. They are all different. So in order to test the gain on the multimeter, we have to check the distribution of the pins. Okay, let's see the gain of the transistors. First, we're going to place the BC547. The emitter would be pin 3. We have the gain. We take it out. We test the 2N5551. The emitter in this case would be pin 1. And there we have a lower gain, but it's still a gain. Now the one with the highest amperage. This one has a higher amperage. In this case, it's more complicated. The emitter is pin 1. And the collector is pin 3. We have the gain. It is almost the same as the BC547, but it has more gain than the previous one. Well, this way you can use any transistor you have. But let it be NPN type BJT. Well, let's put together the circuit. Well, guys, before putting together the circuit, here we can see our circuit. But first we are going to do the following test. Here I have a battery. This battery is discharged. There we can see the voltage is only 1.4 volts. Normally this type of battery should deliver. Well, as it says here. Where is it? 1.5 volts or 1.6 volts. This type of battery could not turn on this type of LED. LEDs need at least 2 volts to be able to turn on. Especially those LEDs that require higher voltage. Like this one here, the high brightness ones. This could not be turned on with a battery. The circuit you see here will allow us to turn on this LED. And other LEDs. Even several LEDs at the same time. Let's test if this battery can turn on this LED. The yellow wire would be positive, And this one here would be negative. Let's test it positive to positive, and negative to negative. And we can see that the LED doesn't turn on, and it won't turn on. 
So we're going to build the circuit to be able to turn on this LED and the other LEDs that we have using any of the transistors and the coil that we took out. So let's start. Very well, let's build the circuit. Now keep in mind that here in the circuit it shows that two ends, or the ends of the coil must be joined. And the other ends have to go to the base of the transistor, and to the collector of the transistor. In this case, the one with the least turns is being used. Fewer turns towards the base, and the one with the most turns towards the collector. Taking into account our coil would be like this when removing it from the board. You shouldn't join the ones on the side. You don't have to join them this way. So what you have to do is join the pins this way. That would be the way they should connect it. This would be the top one, the two united, and these two would be the ones below. Otherwise it won't work. Well, let's make the connections. We put this in a hole. Well, there you can see. Here the two are joined. And here are the other two. They are separated. The blue one has more turns. The blue one would be this one here. And the green one would be this one here. Now we are going to place the transistor. We are going to start with the BC547. Pin 1 is the collector. Pin 3 is the emitter. And the middle pin or pin 2 would be the base. The base would then be the one with the fewest turns. It would be the green cable here. This would be the base. And it would be like this. The emitter would be here. The third pin, emitter, collector. The collector is with the blue wire. This one here has the most turns. And the base is with the green. We only need to energize what would be the emitter and place the LED between the collector and the emitter respecting the polarity. The anode to the collector. The cathode to the emitter. So let's place the LED. In the case of the LED, don't forget that the longest pin is positive, and the shortest pin is negative. So negative, positive. And now we have to feed it with a battery. We put the white wire to negative. Yellow wire to positive. We put negative to negative. Remember that this battery is discharged. It gives us more or less 1.4 volts. So let's see if it turns on. There you can see that it turns on. And so you can see how bright it shines. We're going to turn off the light. We connect it again. See how bright it turns on. It looks like a flashlight. And you can easily do the same. You can even test this one here. Well, let's try it. We take it out. We put this one in, and don't worry if you put the LED in backwards. Nothing will happen. The LED won't burn out. And as you can see, this one lights up much, much brighter. You can easily make it work like a flashlight. And even better, you can connect two of these LEDs here. You can connect these two and make them work the same as the previous one. Keep in mind that two LEDs require more voltage in this case. 
In total, at least 7 volts. We put positive. We put negative. There you can see that both LEDs are lit and using only one battery. Okay, guys, now let's analyze a little how this circuit works. Keep in mind that in this case we have an interesting component here. This component is our toroid. But if you look closely we have two coils, one with fewer turns, and another with many more turns. This reminds us of a component already studied. I am talking about transformers. These high-frequency transformers work with direct current at high frequency. Do not forget that part because here we are working with direct current. And this circuit generates, in this case, a high-frequency square signal. As you can see, we have fewer turns and a greater number of turns. In this case, it would be a step-up transformer because we have more turns here. And we are inducing through this one here. We induce through this coil to this one here. How much do we induce? Well, it will depend on the number of turns. More turns, more voltage. So in this circuit, what is being done is passing a current through base to emitter. And when that happens, then the circuit that feeds this coil here will be closed. Once it is fed, then the other coil will stop working. And in that period of time, it will generate a bounce or an inverted voltage. That voltage will allow our circuit to turn on the LED that we have here. In that way, we will be able to energize any load. Because when we energize the coil, the voltage or polarity is maintained. Positive here, negative here, when this one here is activated. However, when we deactivate or open the circuit, after being energized, the polarity is reversed here. Here it becomes positive, and here it becomes negative. When it becomes positive, it generates a fairly large voltage. And that voltage will pass through the LED diode or load. In this way, it will be able to turn on the LED. The voltage that a coil generates when it discharges is quite large. However, this voltage will be reduced to the value necessary for the load to allow that current to pass. Since it has a high voltage, but very little current, therefore, it will not damage its components. As long as we do not have a high voltage booster, then everything will be fine. Well then here we are working in a cycle of on, off, on and off. Therefore generating a high-frequency square signal, more or less between 30 and 100 kilohertz, depending a lot on the ratio of the coils and the gain of the transistor. So in this way, we have on and off. Now you can use or make your own transformer. In this case, using this ferrite core and two pieces of UTP cable. They are normal cables. But keep in mind that one of them has to be at least three times longer than the other, so that the number of turns or coils is much greater than each other. Then you can do it with Category 5 UTP cable. And wind it as it is here. I didn't do it because as you have just seen the idea was to use the component from the fluorescent light board. And it works very well, that is to say you don't have to buy or spend anything. Basically, you just put it in and that's it. The transistor is the only component that is not from the board, since the one from the light doesn't work correctly due to the low gain. Although we will do some tests to see if all the components can be used. Well, guys, that's all. I hope you like the video. And don't forget a like. It helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.